We're looking at these Goodstein sequences, which start with some number n, and at each step we increase the number using the hereditary base change operation, and then we subtract 1. And our goal right now is to show that, no matter what number we start with, these sequences eventually reach 0 and stop. The obstacle is that these sequences seem to be really long, and the numbers seem to be getting bigger very fast, rather than smaller. So what we're going to do is associate to each step in a Goodstein sequence a timer or a counter. And this timer is supposed to count down the number of steps. So even though the number in the Goodstein sequence might get bigger, the value of the timer should get smaller at each step. And when the timer reaches zero, the sequence should stop. Of course, this means all the work is going to be figuring out what the value of the timer should be so that we can be sure that a the timer decreases at every step so that it does eventually reach zero and b the timer only reaches zero when the goodstein sequence also reaches zero consider the first sort of interesting goodstein sequence the one starting with four we want to assign values of this timer starting at the very first step if we assigned a natural number, that would mean we already knew how many steps were left. If we assign 10 million, the value of the timer at the next step would have to be at most 9,999,999. The next value would be at most 9,999,998. And we'd have to stop with at most 10 million steps. But we don't know how many steps it's going to take, so we can't assign 10 million. We can't assign any natural number because we don't know what the right number of steps is. So the value of our timer can't be a natural number. It has to be some kind of value which still has an ordering and which still has the property that it can't keep getting smaller forever. If the value decreases at each step, the timer has to eventually run out. But it can't just be a natural number. Instead, we're going to use the ordinal numbers, which are an extension of the natural numbers to include transfinite, that is, infinite, numbers. There are several kinds of infinite numbers, and ordinals are just one of them. The ordinals are exactly the approach to infinite numbers, which captures this idea that numbers count down. So ordinal numbers are the right place to look for the value of a timer. So what are these ordinal numbers? The ordinals do extend the natural numbers. So 0, 1, 2, and so on are all ordinals. People disagree about whether 0 should be called a natural number, but 0 is definitely an ordinal. But then, after all the finite ordinals, there's the first infinite ordinal, which is given the name omega. Think what happens when a timer has the value omega. In the next step, the timer has to decrease. The only ordinals less than omega are the finite ones. So in the next step, the timer will be some finite number n, and then after that, there can only be n more steps. So when a timer says there are omega steps left, it's saying we don't know how many steps are left, but after the next step, then we'll have to commit to how many steps are left. And there's another infinite ordinal after omega, which we'll call omega plus 1. The convention is to write this hash sign for the kind of addition we want. The plus sign is conventionally used for a different way of adding ordinals, which we don't need to worry about. All right, so if a number has the value omega plus 1, that means that at the next step, we have to de decrease to a smaller number, which could be finite, or it could be omega. But if the next step gets omega, then in the following step, we do have to reach a finite number. So when a timer says omega plus 1, that means we don't know how many steps are left, but in at most two steps, the timer will have to decrease to a finite value, and then we'll know how many steps are left. And this keeps going. So after omega plus 1 is omega plus 2, and then omega plus 3, and omega plus n for every n. The timer omega plus n means in at most n plus 1 steps, the timer will have de decreased to a finite number, at which point we'll know how many steps are left. So these transfinite ordinals aren't telling us how many steps are left. 
but they are making a commitment about what will happen at later steps. The essential property here is that even though these ordinals can be infinite, they can only decrease finitely many times. There are infinitely many numbers below omega, but when we decrease from omega, we have to pick a specific finite number to decrease to. There's no omega minus one. There's no previous number. This is an important property that has a name. The ordinals are well-founded, and that exactly means any strictly decreasing sequence of ordinals is finite. There does not exist an infinite sequence of ordinals, alpha 1, bigger than alpha 2, bigger than alpha 3, and so on, that goes on forever. Any sequence that keeps decreasing has to eventually stop. And that's exactly what we would want in the values of a timer. Well-foundedness promises that when the timer decreases at every step, we really do have to eventually hit the smallest ordinal zero and then stop because there's no further down to go. You might have guessed that the ordinals just keep going. So larger than any of these numbers omega plus n is the number omega plus omega. And when a timer has the value omega plus omega, that means I don't know how many steps are left. I don't even know when I'll know how many steps are left. But at the next step, the timer will decrease maybe to a finite number, but maybe to omega plus n for some n. And at that point, we still won't know how many steps are left, but we'll finally know how many steps there are until we'll reach a finite number, which will tell us how many steps are left. After omega plus omega, there's omega plus omega plus 1, and omega plus omega plus 34, and then omega plus omega plus omega. And we could call that omega times 3, and then we could think about omega times n for any n, which is omega plus omega plus omega dot 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 with n omegas in the sum. And we might as well jump from there right to omega times omega, which we'll usually call omega squared. Let's pause to think about what this ordinal means, which means we should think about what happens if our timer starts at omega squared and we count down. The numbers below omega squared are numbers like omega times n, or more generally, omega times n plus m. So if our timer starts at omega squared, at the next step, we count down to a sum of finitely many omegas, n omegas, plus a finite part, plus m. And then, after m steps, we count down to at most a sum of n omegas. We're always allowed to count down faster. We could always go omega squared, omega times 6 plus 311, 2. But when we talk about examples, we usually talk about the slowest sequence, where we count down as little as possible. So the slowest thing we can do is count down from omega times m n plus m to omega times n in m steps. And then we have to decrease in the next step. So we can go to omega times n minus 1, plus some other finite number m prime. And then after m prime steps, we would hit omega times n minus 1. And then we'd have to go to omega times n minus 2, plus a finite thing, m double prime. And this keeps going. After a finite number of steps, we have to lose an omega from our sum. We only started with n omegas. So after we do that n times, we're at a finite number m lots of primes, and we know there are at most m lots of primes steps left. That's why the ordinals up to omega squared are well-founded. Even though omega squared is this big infinite thing, below omega squared you can have any finite numbers of omegas, but when you decrease from omega squared you have to pick n omegas, a fixed finite number of omegas in your sum. And then as you keep decreasing, you eventually have to run out of those omegas. We're actually going to need a lot more ordinals, however. After omega squared comes omega squared plus 1. And eventually, omega squared plus omega. And then there's omega squared plus omega times 30. And then omega squared plus omega squared, which is omega squared times 2. And then omega squared times 3. And eventually, omega squared times omega, omega cubed and eventually omega to the n, and then omega to the omega. And we can keep going like this, omega to the omega to the omega, and then omega to the 
omega to the omega to the omega. And then bigger than or all of these, bigger than a tower of n exponents, any tower of finitely many exponents, is an ordinal with its own name called epsilon zero. And that's what we need. The ordinals less than epsilon zero. The ordinals that use towers of exponents, but only finite towers of exponents. So in the next video, we'll figure out more exactly what these ordinals are, what sequences descending from these ordinals look like, and build the tools we need to write them down and compare them and add them.